My name is Dirk Trotsky uh, and I'm uh, associated with the Western Cape Department of Agriculture, uh, Director of Business Planning and Strategy. And the purpose of, our, of my presentation today is to evaluate or to give an uh, example of the approach that we in the department take with supporting uh, resource poor farmers and specifically then the commodity approach and for that reason I've selected one particular project, the Boompi project, and to explain how we go about that one. My name is Mokhale Sevopetsa. I am with the Department of Agriculture, Western Cape. And the purpose of being here today was to share with the colleagues the successes we've registered uh, with respect to the land reform projects that we've been supporting from 2009 to 2013. Uh, through an evaluation we picked up that there was 62 percent success rate and we think the recipe is really in partnerships uh, that we have with commodity formations uh, in the province. Thank you. I think we need to start with a national development plan. Uh, the planning commission was appointed in May 2010 and their brief was to develop a vision for South Africa and to translate <coughs> that into a plan. That, that, that can be implemented. And what they found was two main uh, uh, reasons why there was such slow progress. And the first was failure to implement policies. <coughs> and the second is the absence of good partnerships. And those two issues we are taking forward in, in the way we address this. The NDP was released in November 2011 and the final document was in uh, uh, 15 August 2011, was handed to the president. There's 15 chapters of which a number of, of, are of relevance to us. And uh, chapter six, an integrated and inclusive rural economy, is the chapter that is probably most relevant to us. And in that particular ch chapter, the key elements in that chapter say, the first is expand irrigated agriculture through water use efficiency and new irrigation schemes, which is a problem in the Western Cape due to our lack of, of water. Use underutilized land for commercial production and then support those industries and regions with the highest potential. Uh, job creation and, very important, creative combination between opportunities. Uh, combine opportunities, working together again is, is the theme. And then it put very much emphasis on land reform. This is uh, uh, table 6.1 in the National Development Plan and what this table basically does, it say on the one axis your industries with the highest growth potential uh, and on the other axis your industries with the higher uh, labor usage. And ideally this group are the group of industries which we should uh, select and support. Now, the uh, example uh, we've selected is basically in this area, nectarines, plums, apples, pears, uh, those, those types of, of, of products. So this is the one thing that's in the National Development Plan. The other thing that's in the, the National Development Plan is that uh, about one million jobs, jobs should be created in the agricultural sector. Those jobs should be both on-farm and off-farm. Okay. In the Western Cape, how many of those jobs should we create? If we say the Western Cape is one of nine provinces and that the, uh, uh, we only look at the quarterly labor force survey, we should, look at 30, we should create 30,519 jobs. Now, if you compare the labor force survey, the Western Cape agricultural data of the labor force survey, you will find that between 2011 and the latest one, which is the second quarter of 2014, 40,000 jobs has actually been created in the Western Cape. On the Boompi project, the Western Cape Department of Agriculture for the past five, six years, we have actually been promoting partnerships with commercial agriculture. And what we've done is with a series of commodity organizations, we have established that partnerships and the support services to farmers are being done in conjunction uh, with those. And the Boompi project is an example of, or is a case study of 
one of these partnerships with the deciduous fruit industry. And the deciduous fruit industry is their representative organization is Hortgrove. What is very important, and if you look at the National Development Plan, is those farmers should be linked to the market. And they should be enabled to participate in existing value chains. So in other words, from the very start, the right cultivar must be planted. An apple is not an apple, okay? despite uh, what people try to believe. An apple is not an apple. You've got various cultivars, various qualities for various market segments. So when you plant that tree, it, you must be sure that you will be able to uh, uh, harvest the right product. And the roles in this is that the industry provide the trees and the technical advice. From our side, we provide uh, the land preparation, irrigation, drainage, uh, trellising and things like that. And the Commodity uh, Project Assessment Committee, CPAC, evaluate each pro project in terms of the viability of, of each. Now the CPAC consists out of officials from us, uh, from industry and some other various role players. So together each project are being evaluated. Now since 2009 to 2012, over those four years, uh, we've established uh, 300 and close to 313 hectares of fruit trees. Now, the cost of establishing one hectare of fruit trees ranges between 150 to about 250 rands per hectare. Uh, but I've calculated an average, and that average is basically, depending on the type, type of trees, at the cultivar, etc., I've calculated a weighted average to make this easier. Okay? So that is 178,000 uh, rand. And so the total value of investment over those four years is 55 million rand that has been invested in, the, in this project. For the deciduous fruit industry, the cost of one job is 119 <coughs> rand fixed investment to create one particular job. So in, on, in that 313 hectares, 470 jobs has been created. Now, Hortgrow contributed 13 million of that 55 million in terms of what they have provided in the trees, in the services, etc. From our side, we've contributed 10 million, 10.66 million, from our CASP funding, Comprehensive Agricultural Support Package. So the total support is 23 million, or just below a half, and then your other partners, in other words, in your, your beneficiaries themselves, in terms of sweat equity, labor, etc., and certain strategic partner contributed the balance of, of that. If, if one look at, at the efficacy considerations, we established 313 hectares. If we used that 10 million rand CASP money, we would have only established 40 hectares. So by working together, as the National Development Plan asked us to do, to create partnerships, we could establish almost eight times bigger area. Okay? We created 470 jobs, we would have only created 90 jobs, which is five times more. Now, just in terms of conclusion on, on my particular part, um, through this partnership, we could have established a lot more jobs and economic potential than if we wanted to do it on, a, on our own. Uh, we would have only created 19% of the economic stimulus than if we did it together. Uh, the whole, uh, the whole idea of creating partnerships, of working together, cre are creating dividends. And through these partnerships, we could have placed our previously disadvantaged disadva farmers on a much bigger and on a better tra trajectory. Right. My, my presentation is around the land reform evaluation. But as management, we, we, we had to look at defining success because minister said to us we need to ensure 60 percent success rate and the issue for us was what is success we define success in the following five indicators uh, the first one we wanted to check whether these are legal businesses you know whether they comply with your SARS um, and labor laws of the land that that was the first one the second one was to establish whether these businesses had business plans and to what extent the business owners themselves were intimate with these particular plans. 
Now, the third point we, we thought would define success for us was whether these businesses had access to markets. The fourth one was the extent to which these businesses kept records. The last indicator that we looked at was uh, the extent to which the business owners themselves would reinvest part of their, their, their profits back into the business. 164 projects were sampled uh, from the 246, and, and this was a representation of the, the district spread, the municipality, and the size in terms of the number of, of beneficiaries. Now, in terms of the evaluation framework, three key dimensions were looked at. The first dimension is a dimension that looks at the economic productivity. The second dimension was the dimension that looks at the socioeconomic factors. The third dimension was the dimension around environmental issues. To what extent uh, are these farmers or these businesses taking care of the natural, the, nat the natural resources? Now, this is the project rating system. All those are the indicators uh, under the economic uh, productivity to us, your business formalization, expertise and management, market access, production, income, expenditure and debts. Under the socioeconomic and environmental, you see the, Im the impact on your natural resources, the labor law, the quality of life, issues around empowerment. These are all the indicators, the 39 indicators that these projects were actually subjected to. Now, in terms of the highest scoring indicators, the first one that is scored the highest is the fact that a number of these land reform projects had the ability to service their own debts. Now, the lowest scoring indicators, here are they. The percentage of farming electricity from renewable energy or green energy, it's, it's scored the lowest. The report says, ladies and gentlemen, in the Western Cape, based on a population of 246 projects, there's 62% success rate. And of course, it would be expected that as government, we will celebrate the 62%. But let me tell you where we come from in the Department of Agriculture, we actually are concerned about the 38%. This slide summarizes the entire study. When we look on all failed projects, this project said no market access contracts in place. They had no operational loans. There was no skills development plan in place in most of these businesses. They received no mentorship. There was no change in terms of the access to food and ability to feed their own families. But if you look on all successful projects, they, these were legal entities. And they complied with labor law, ladies and gentlemen. But also they had uh, market access. All their produce were actually uh, destined to, to, to certain markets. But importantly, these businesses kept the records. Now, a few recommendations were made, and uh, because of time, I've decided I'll only show the four. Uh, the one in recommendation was that we needed to support uh, the formalization of businesses. And for your information, we have a unit for technical assistance within our agency, Casidra, and this is where we're going to have to bring more money and strengthen it that uh, we encourage farmers to formalize their businesses. But the other recommendation was that we need to use more of our uh, economists uh, in terms of where the planning of, of these uh, businesses. The third issue was the issue around the business planning process, that we need to consider developing a unit that will assist farmers in putting together their plans and so on and so forth. The fourth issue was around uh, farmer support and development officers, these extension officers, that they are not trained on issues that are to do with conflict resolution and so forth, and, and this is a reality. Now in conclusion, we think this success is linked largely to the commodity approach, which Derek had referred to earlier. We think we would not have been able to achieve this success had we not partnered with commercial agriculture. But I also thought, uh, lastly, I must indicate to you that there was a separate study uh, on the impact of the comprehensive agricultural support program that has just been completed by the Department of Agriculture, Forestry and Fisheries which has largely confirmed the results of this particular study. Thank you.